afternoon lovely people how are you all doing today i hope you're well um i'm good it's muggy today it's um i'm starting us off in the show <laughs> i'm starting us off in the shed because outside it is suddenly really windy you're not going to hear a word i say but also because i need to get my oh, bits and pieces ready for today However, um, the shed is an absolute mess and it's been a case of, for each session I've had, I've kind of done my session, watered, gone home. So there's no order in this place at all. So my basket is still, I'm just going to decant them all to the shelves now, is still full of all the beans that I re-sowed, uh, I think it's 10 days ago now. They're just shooting, brilliant. Uh, yeah, it's that kind of time of year, isn't it, where, <laughs> well, actually it's not that time of year. Normally this, this, this chaos would be towards the end of May. So, uh, obviously, <laughs> Sorry, clunk, clunk. Obviously, we know that I'm behind this year. <laughs> I'm so behind. It's oh, uh, you know, I forgot the other day when I was doing the beans. The district nurse from Catherine. Is it worth putting a few in? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save these for next year and just hope. Uh, yeah, just hope, hope, hope that I buy a property with a bit of garden. Um, yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> I've got a peb. I think that's Poppy's pebble. Pebble. It faded, so I'm putting in the basket to redo. Yeah, I'm super duper behind. But what I've kind of set my mind to, and I would say that oh, sorry, fiddly fiddly. Um, these are my row markers from what was the last thing I row marked? Probably the beans again three weeks ago. No, the original, I didn't row mark when I re-sewed, I just used my trowel, just couldn't be bothered, <laughs> just get them in. So this is from four weeks ago. Um, yeah, at, at the beginning of June, I felt like I caught up a little bit and I was probably two weeks behind. But then of course I got silly COVID, off for two weeks, so in essence I was then four weeks behind. I'm mentioning this partly because things I'm going to do today you've probably all done already. If there's any useful information in this today hopefully you can use it next year. So what I kind of decided when I came back in the middle of June, I think I did that tour on the 14th of June, it's 30th day, basically I, I sort of said I've got 14 days or so until the end of the month let's see if I can complete the garden. It was a bit of a tall order. Um, and I haven't managed it. I haven't managed it. However, I'm pretty darn close. I've got a few things left to plant. Tomatoes, peppers, courgettes, chard, my little plugs of things. And then I'll move on to the brassicas. But actually, I would be moving on to the brassicas in July normally in a normal year anyway so in a way the brassicas are kind of they're sort of on schedule i would have pricked them out before now that's late but otherwise sort of on schedule right i'm trying to remember what i'm doing so i've got my epsom salts for the planting hole trowel to make my hole scissors and string and then there's one other really important thing here it is this is the um this came from Marita. This is the. I don't know if you can, oh, sorry, shiny, shiny. Where is it not shiny? That way. It's this pl bla um, red plastic ground cover that is supposed to help. It's supposed to do a number of things. It's supposed to help prevent blight, so that when it rains and the rain splashes onto the plastic rather than the soil. The, the blight spores that are in the soil don't then bounce back up onto the plant. I don't think that will make a huge difference for me because I tend to strip, I 
I've been bitten on my way in here. There's so much long grass on site at the moment. Um, I tend to strip my lower foliage anyway, but it's supposed to, yeah, so help prevent blight. Obviously it's gonna act as a mulch, but the big thing it reckons is, um, let me read what I've got my reader's note in with it still, so I didn't forget, because honestly these days I can't remember names, I can't remember anything, so I always feel guilty if I'm thanking someone and then I can't remember their name, but anyway, um, it says up to 26% increase in yield because it is supposed to help ripen them more quickly. Um, yeah, ripen them more quickly. So I don't see how that's going to increase the yield. It's just going to increase the speed of ripening. Anyway, so I'm going to give it a go on some of them to see how it works. So that's that. There's loads of bits to get gather up in the garden not least of which is the actual tomato plants i'm just going to sit for a second and explain i'm going to sit in at this end because rosie bless her is on my day bed amongst all sorts of other junk that's about a quick sit down i basically um just walked down here via the post office and bumped into someone else so i've been stood up quite a lot so it's nice to sit for a second Okay, so let's just recap about the tomatoes and the Epsom salts really quickly. I know a lot of you have been tuning in for a number of years, will know all this, uh, but for people who haven't, new growers perhaps, and like I said, even if it's too late for you this year, hopefully some of this advice will be good for next year. So, first of all, the type of tomatoes. Mixture of varieties, but they all have one thing in common, they are all cordon type tomatoes. There might be a couple that are bush type. I'm not entirely sure because, sorry neighbours, um, because there were a couple of spare seeds that Steve sent to me, so I'll treat them slightly differently. But on the whole, I grow cordon type tomatoes as opposed to bush type there's only those two types it's nothing to do with the variety well it is to do with the variety but what I mean is there's all sorts of variety within those two groups all that cordon means or bush means is it's talking about its growing habit cordon tomatoes go up 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 it's mostly what the commercial growers grow bush types as the name suggests grow as a bush all sort of spread out all over the place maybe get to three four feet tall whereas the cordon ones can get to eight nine feet tall they're also both known as indeterminate and determinate determinate for the bush because it's it reaches a determined height it doesn't keep on going the indeterminate is because the height is indeterminate it can keep going and going and going so apart from the fact that I like the varieties, I love the varieties I'm growing, I grow cordon for a specific reason. And it's something I've talked about quite often with in other videos with other plantings and, and styles of plantings, is this idea of vertical growing as much as possible if you've only got a small space. Now, a small sp a space might be just a teeny tiny courtyard back garden it might be a balcony etc um, I consider my plot is a big space in terms of the work it takes but in terms of self-sufficiency and growing enough food for a whole year it's actually a really really small space so by growing vertically I'm maximizing that small space a vertical plant its footprint Say for the tomatoes, it's only going to need about a foot of space. It's tomatoes slap bang in the middle, a foot, another foot, another tomato slap bang in the middle. With bush varieties, you would need probably, I would say, probably three feet. So in other words, where I could get one bush tomato variety, I can get three of my cordons. One cordon will probably give me a similar yield to the bush. So what I'm trying to do is maximise the yield for the same space. 
so yay for the vertical gardening the um yeah so that's why oh, it's really been, i'm so itchy these bites are so distracting so to recap my varieties today i will be growing gardener's delight which is a sort of a bog standard salad type tomato it's quite often described as a cherry but it's it's bigger than a cherry I'm trying to find something to equate the size it's one of my stores still store from last year you know they can get almost that big so they're a they're a very generous cherry gardener's delight they're bog standard they're prolific they are a slightly later to ripen in the year than everything else so if you have a blight year and you're only growing gardener's delight it might mean that you get nothing that year bear that in mind if you're in a blighty area um so yeah and i find that they're lovely for eating raw in salads all through the, sort of the late summer early autumn they also work perfectly well as a sauce tomato and they're a really good tomato for bottling because they're a slightly higher acid tomato so if you if you are trying to have a slightly lower acid diet maybe avoid gardener's delight and then the other two three this year are um also favorites now we're, we're getting into the sort of the bigger tomatoes amish paste which is a nice sort of beefy tomato great for sauces rose de bain which is that lovely heritage tomato i brought all the all the way a whole tomato all the way back from the south of france for its seeds um that's rose de bain and this year and i can't remember what they're supposed to do in terms of the aspect but i also have got the guernsey tomatoes uh, that were sent to me thank you lovely so we'll see how those and then i've got a couple of the the odd ones from steve there's a and i think they're both cherry types okay so that's tomato types cordon bush indeterminate determinate i grow this will pack way more into my small garden and then the other thing to quickly say fishing it out is i've got some epsom salts i'll add a sprinkle to each planting hole epsom salts are essentially magnesium <clears throat> dry mouth magnesium now i use them have used them for years to help prevent blossom end rot which is a fairly common issue with tomatoes where the the bottom of the fruit which is the first little bit to develop um, it doesn't develop properly because of a lack of calcium it gets a brown spot that brown spot spreads and it, basically the whole fruit rots it's not very pleasant at all now that's a calcium issue not a magnesium issue um, and the, the problem with the with blossom end rot is it's not that the plant lacks calcium, it's that the plant can't move the calcium to where it needs it, as in the fruits. It's like the calcium sort of gets stuck in the stem. I'm kind of speaking in very lay terms, but that's kind of the issue. The calcium gets stuck. The magnesium um, helps the plant to move the calcium so it can move the calcium to where it needs it. So I'm not addressing a calcium deficiency because um, there isn't a calcium deficiency. My soil is not calcium deficient and I'm not trying to address calcium deficiency with magnesium. That kind of doesn't make sense either. I'm helping the, the calcium that is present to be transported by using the magnesium. In a way, it's like um, vitamin C when, we, when we're taking vitamin C. Vitamin C is much better absorbed when we're having it alongside a source of iron. So, for instance, if you're having your, you know, a spinach laden lunch because you need to increase your iron, if you have a glass of orange juice for your, well, or, you know, broccoli, anything that's high in vitamin C, when we combine our vitamin C and iron in one meal, that helps in the absorption of both of those things. So that's why I add the magnesium to help move the calcium. Now, some people may say it doesn't work, whatever it is. My experience, and I've been doing it in this garden this way for 13, this will be my 14th year of doing this, 
it's worked every time. There was one year about six, seven years or so ago when I had a batch of hinky compost and it wrecked my tomatoes. My tomatoes were just not going to happen. I did a second sowing much later on but didn't know if they were going to come good in time and the word went out on site, <coughs> excuse me, that I had uh, I had an issue with tomatoes so people started giving me their spares and I think between between about five or six different people I ended up with 24 tomato plants it was brilliant it's absolutely brilliant so I got them all planted with the Epsom salts as I always do and great no blossom end rot and then it was a bit of a last minute dot com thing someone else turned up with another three tomato plants and I had room to squeeze them in I didn't have any Epsom salts left so I just bunged them in and lo and behold those three plants all had blossom end rot so I can't tell you you know definitively that the magnesium helps with that calcium transportation what I know from experience is that I've never had blossom end rot doing this method and the one year that I didn't use it on a couple of plants they both ended up with blossom end rot so there we go right that's enough chat let's get out there it is really really blustery um so I think it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be a mime show should we do a mime show with the tomatoes yay come on That's what I call optimism. <laughs> Where to put them for now? Oh, nah. Right. Let's go and get the star of the show. The tomatoes! <laughs> well, you can probably see it's high time. <laughs> they're at the top of the um, cold frame. Now I did take the shade netting off a couple of days ago because oopla, I thought they might be oh la la careful Vivi. Oh I've just completely snapped to that one. Oh I'm an idiot. What one was that? That's a Golden Sunrise. I think that must have been one of the ones from Steve. I'm going to set these aside for the minute because I have just, opla, <laughs> just snapped that one's stem, but right near the bottom. So what I can do is when I plant it, as I will with most of them anyway, is just sink it deeper into the ground and it will send out some side roots. First of all, Oh, I think they're just all mixed up. Let's just have them out. That's some um, gardener's delight. Some gardener's delight and on the end in the smaller pots it's Amish paste can you see how the lower leaves are yellowing that's where they've um, they've run out of nutrients in the the original compost they really really need to go in and have been needing to go in for some time all in the wheelbarrow at the same time but I'm going to just get them out of the cold frame this is these are all Amish paste so you can see they're looking good big healthy plants um, but also plants that are right on the cusp of being really not happy to be in these pots anymore I want to find oh yeah so these Oh, special. These are the Guernsey ones. I think I've got, well, there's six in this tray. I don't know if I've got any more in any other trays. So what I'm going to do is so I can see already that there are little side shoots. I'll talk more about this when I do tomato cares in a week or so. 
so with a cordon I'd have these side shoots out however as I said earlier on I can't remember I can't remember whether they are a cordon or a bush whether they are an indeterminate or a determinate I'm running out of space I want to get all the gardeners delight in first oh <laughs> do you know what I'm gonna Exactly as I did the other day with my squash, I'm just going to get everything out, get it on the ground so I can see what I've got, how many I want for each row, each bed, what have you. And then we'll start planting. Oh, I didn't think this day would ever come. Quite possibly the worst day for doing this. It's, um, it's just this really gusting wind. It's knocking all my tomatoes over. But, like I said, I want this garden in and getting away for July. So, oh, it's not very deep. Take my whole sprinkle of salt. Snap off any little side shoots, lower leaves bang on the pot. This row is my lovely Guernsey Toms. Oh la la. Which I've never grown before. Don't know what to expect. <laughs> but they're looking all right so far. Plant in and then Steak. In terms of the ergonomics, I've normally just get them all planted and then do all the staking and tying later. But I'm staking and tying as I go. Uh, like I said, it just gets so windy. And having snapped, having snapped one of these precious plants getting it out of the cold frame, I do not want to snap anymore. If you can hear faintly in the background you can hear a bit of noise it's there's um i think they're warming up or testing out or whatever there's a there's a i can't think what you call it like a festival happening at oh, crystal palace this weekend uh which is if i carry on going I, i'm always talking about where i live on the hill the hill is i'm actually halfway up to the top i'm the top for my part of town but if you carry on and carry on, you get to Crystal Palace. So at the moment, I'm getting these kind of <coughs> blasts of their sound, which means over the weekend, sitting in my window seat, if the wind is in the right direction, I'll get a free concert. <laughs> Not that I'll hear it because I'll be tuning into, well, Oh my goodness, which to tune into? I've got a choice between tuning into Wimbledon or, of course, it's now the Tour de France starting. I think it starts tomorrow. Yeah, it's sport for choice. Summer sports, pig in mud. Okay, let's chat more. What I find, you know, I'm doing this stool gardening much more these days. What I find difficult though is um, getting any pressure to firm things in. So what I'll do is once, oh, la, once they're all in, stake tied, etc, etc, I'll be coming along to water them. I've already done that row. That's the gardener's delight. And just before I put the water on, I've just kind of put my toe into the soil just to make sure they are firmed in. Likewise with the, the poles, I can't really firm them in from this sitting position. And as always, I've completely forgotten how long it takes to plant things out. I had all sorts of planting out plans for this afternoon, but if I get the tomatoes done, I think I might be, that might be me done. Right, I'll catch you up when we're finished and I can show you all these lovely things that have gone in.
And that, my friends, that is a wrap. Almost. Oh my goodness, that's quite an effort. So this bed that we're in this year for the tomatoes, it's the bed that's slightly wider than all my other beds. Um, here comes that wind again. Where I would normally get eight plants in a row, I've managed to get nine in. So instead of 32 plants, I've got 36, which is great. And I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why it's, it's such an effort. It's just 36 plants, but I suppose, you know, up, down, up, down, along that. Look, they're done. I am rechuffed. <laughs> so, yeah, as I was saying at the top, I really had hoped um, I'm going to have to project a bit, even though you're right there, just because I don't know what this wind is doing to our sound. I said right at the beginning that I'd wanted to get the garden planted by the end of June. Um, I almost did it. Almost. So after today, in terms of planting, I mean, don't forget, I did do a load of reseeding all the beans. So now left to plant are courgettes, a few straggly peppers, they've really suffered. Courgettes, peppers. Brassicas, which are a July job anyway, so they're not behind. And I've got, having done all this planting, so remember I said I was gonna get, I got them all out of the cold frame, got them sort of like, I was trying to <laughs> arrange them on the path, but the wind was sending them flying, but I counted up to make the most of, sort of having a complete row of, was de burn an almost complete row of Amish paste there was a place on the end I put my spare rose de burn there's a whole row of gardeners delight I'd normally do two rows but the gardeners delight were the ones that got eaten by the sugs I've never known the sugs do toms behind them are the Guernsey yeah the Guernseys is that what they're called just Guernsey tomatoes anyway the point is I got all my main four in and I'm left with six plants. Four are called something like black cherry and two, one of which is the one I broke, was called golden something or other, surprise. And they're the ones from Steve, which I'm not sure if they're bush or cordon. And I'm not quite sure where they're gonna go yet. I've got a few ideas, but that can wait too. So, in other words, here we are, right at the end of June. Oh, I'm, I'm so relieved. I could, I could cry from relief. I'm not going to. Don't worry. No tears today. Right. So now, oh, I've got to go and water everything. Uh, we're really, really dry. I've got a little bit of my Epsom salts left. That's coming home with me. That's going in my bath tonight. That's for me, <laughs> not the tomatoes. Oh no, I won't take it home just yet. I've got the six spares to plant, haven't I? And what I also haven't done today is put this sheet, this plastic sheet out because it's been so windy. I just thought it was going to get into a right royal flap uh, and I thought that would get me in a tizzy, I'd get grumpy and I'd give up and I'd go home <laughs> and I didn't want to do that. So I'll wait for a... I'm going to wait for a calmer day to do that. But otherwise, um, actually by the, by the time I get this edited and put out, it will be just into July by the time you see this. But yeah, just gonna wrap up today by saying, here I am at the end of June, two weeks ago, <laughs> I'm still in my pajamas, feeling so poorly. I am chuffed, I am so utterly, utterly delighted to have been able to do what I have done, I don't care that I didn't get it all done. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I've done this much. It's brilliant. And I've got my beloved tomatoes in. And I reckon with this heat we're having, sun's coming back out, 
with the heat we're having, if I can keep on top of watering, I reckon in a week's time I'm going to be doing tomato cows. Oh, it's my favourite, favourite garden job ever. Uh, I'll bring you along for that. Right. I'm going to go and have a quiet moment outside the shed in the shade for a minute before I crack into the watering and I will see you all again really soon. I think, um, oh, sorry, all uncomfortable. I think what we might do for the next one, I think I'm just going to literally grab everything else that I've got left that's a plant. Oh, I've forgotten all the chard, the beetroot, the spinach. <laughs> I don't know where things are going to go. I think what we'll do is we'll have a session where literally everything else that I've got left in a pot or a module, we'll just chuck it in and see what happens. Yay! It's going to be another chuck it in and see year. Sometimes they're the best years. <sighs> see you next time. Take care, lovelies. And if you can, keep plugging away at your gardens too because honestly, Two weeks ago, I didn't think I was going to have a garden at all this year. And you know what? I have. So it's worth sticking with it and, yeah, just giving it your best effort whenever you can. Oh, I'm so happy. See you all for the next one very soon. Until then, cheerio.